It's my great pleasure to introduce our distinguished guests this morning. The Honorable Amarjeet Sohi, our Federal Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, welcome. The Honorable Bob Shirelli, Minister of Infrastructure for the Province of Ontario. Thank you for being here, Minister. And I'm delighted to introduce our moderator this morning, Amanda Lang. Amanda is an award-winning business journalist and the producer and author of Bloomberg North on, anchor I should say, of Bloomberg North on Bloomberg TV Canada. And Michael Liebrich, founder and chairman of the advisory board for Bloomberg New Energy Finance. And Michael is also a board member for Transport for London. Thank you all for being here. As Amanda and the ministers are taking their seats on stage, please come on up. I'd like to draw your attention to the volunteers who are holding catch boxes. Volunteers, can you hold up those catch boxes? I know that there are some of you here today that were not here yesterday. These are portable microphones, and so you actually throw them from person to person to ask a question. When you've asked your question, you throw it on to the next person. Uh, we're going to be bringing those in a little bit later in the program today, but uh, I would like to point out and remind you to please lob them gently and keep your heads up. We don't want anyone taking a catch box to the forehead. Not sure our insurance covers that. So, are we ready? We're ready. Great. Take it away, Amanda. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, thanks for being here, ministers. Uh, appreciate it very much. Um, and as mentioned, we will welcome your questions in a short while. I'm going to hog the floor for a bit. Um, Minister So, we just, just had a budget, uh, and there was a big, as expected, in, emphasis on infrastructure. So why, can you just drill down a little bit on that federal budget into the ways in which the infrastructure spend will focus on renewable and pivoting our economy, balanced against the needs to have it show up in the economy as soon as possible? Yeah. Oh, first of all, uh, and thank you so much for, uh, for having us. Uh, Bob and I have uh, been working together uh, on infrastructure file uh, since both of us took responsibility. Uh, I am really, really pleased and happy uh, to, be, to be here. Uh, our infrastructure plan is part of our overall goal to grow our economy, create jobs for the middle class, and, uh, and build more sustainable, inclusive, welcoming uh, places for Canadians to uh, uh, to live in. So we committed to doubling our infrastructure investments over the next 10 years. Uh, all, uh, you know, going from um, uh, about 60 to 70 billion dollars now committed to invest uh, uh, more than 180 billion dollars. We apply three lenses uh, to uh, our in in investments. One is obviously grow our economy, create jobs. The second lens we apply is the uh, are we actually helping build inclusive communities? Social inclusion is very big for our government. So providing opportunities for vulnerable populations, building social housing into uh, investment into shelters. Uh, and the third lens we apply is the green lens. Are we building communities that are more resilient to climate change? Are we helping reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Are we investing into right innovation and technologies uh, that help us create the economies uh, of, uh, of tomorrow? So under green infrastructure, uh, there's a big focus on three areas, environmental sustainability, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, and the, and the quality of water, and how do we actually deal with wastewater and, and flood mitigation. So those are the areas that we have been focused on phase one, and that's the exact focus will be on our long-term plan. And Minister Shirelli, Ontario has a, um, a rather large commitment to infrastructure spending, $100 billion over time. How does that, how do the plans in Ontario fit within the larger Canadian picture? In other words, how, how do you consider the federal plans as you're making your own decisions? Well, first of all, I think the, the level of collaboration between the federal government and the provinces has dramatically increased. Yeah. Uh, certainly, uh, as ministers of infrastructure, we've met on a regular basis. Our staffs are meeting on a regular basis. Our deputy ministers are meeting on a regular basis. Uh, and we're working towards a high level of uh, integration and collaboration. Uh, our uh, infrastructure budget over, I guess, 10 years left in a 12-year program is $160 billion. 
Uh, the federal is $180 million plus, but when billion. you take a billion, when you take, that's a <laughs> short change again. Uh, but uh, uh, when you take uh, an estimated Ontario portion of the federal infrastructure program, our 10 year infrastructure program is $235 billion. That's very, very substantial. And what I like about the federal program, it's across the board in different. Uh, different sectors. Uh, so uh, you have it in transit, you have it in social infrastructure, you've got green infrastructure, etc. One of the problems collectively we've had as governments uh, is that we've, uh, we've prioritized infrastructure and certain areas we've allowed to go underfunded and mm -hmm. create a significant infrastructure deficit. Sure. Uh, and we have a much better chance now across the board uh, we're also focusing, both governments, uh, on not only new infrastructure, because it's always a good experience for politicians to be cutting a ribbon on a new project, but when you're retrofitting buildings in colleges and universities, when you're retrofitting uh, business operations uh, across the province, uh, that's very, very significant. Uh, and both of us now are working towards having a balance between new infrastructure and refurbishing and maintaining existing infrastructure. But the level of col uh, collaboration, the amount of money that we're putting into infrastructure is very trans transformative and very, very uh, beneficial to Ontario and Canada. The spending, uh, as you say, is, is a requirement. It's not a, a nice to have. We, there's, we have this infrastructure deficit that's well understood. Mm -hmm. The issue some people would think, um, and I'll put this to both of you, is in the, in the execution of how this happens uh, and actually getting it right. And, I, and by that I mean uh, prioritizing which projects should happen first, um, how that financing should work. And then to your point, you've got three different competing uh, agenda items. They may not all fit together. Who, who has the oversight on a national in a national way to make sure that this is happening in the best possible way? So from a federal perspective, one thing that we strongly believe in is, uh, is the decision making has to happen at the local level. So municipal councilor, councils working in, uh, in partnership with provinces and territories deciding which projects to invest in. What we are doing different from the previous administration is uh, not focus as much on uh, on outputs, how many projects you funded, but more focus on outcomes. What do you want to, to actually achieve through these investments? Uh, obviously, strong, sustainable communities, reduction in greenhouse gas emission, but also growing the economy and creating opportunities. So we, we, we look at that, uh, not just counting how many projects we funded, but local decision making is, uh, is very, very important to us because uh, you know, uh, uh, federal government is, uh, is uh, not as connected to the realities mm -hmm. of uh, citizens as our local mayors and councillors. Uh, so I think we, we respect that decision making. Some of those outputs are, um, are less tangible or obvious uh, or longer term. Governments are often hampered by the need to measure outcomes in next quarter's GDP and jobs created. How do you balance that pressure against doing the right thing? I think one thing we need to understand as government, and I'm pretty so, uh, sure uh, that Canadians, uh, uh, to some extent, do understand, and local politicians definitely understand this, is that infrastructure is, is, is about long term. This is not about immediate stimulus uh, uh, that you say you invest now, you can create jobs tomorrow. That is not how infrastructure works, particularly if you're talking about transformative infrastructure investments. So one thing that we have committed to do is give long-term sustainable and predictable funding to our partners. We are developing a 10-year plan, so every province is going to know how much money they're going to receive from the federal government for public transit, how much they're going to receive for green infrastructure, how much are they receiving for social infrastructure, so they can start aligning their capital plans and the, uh, and the municipalities can start aligning their capital plans uh, and start working together to achieve those outcomes. Quickly, if I can mention something. Uh, Bob talked about federal government investing $180 billion. Their plan is to uh, invest another uh, few hundred 
billion dollars and other provinces and territories municipalities have when you look at collective investment over the next decade we will be investing close to 600 to 800 billion dollars in infrastructure and you put that into context in a, how small our population is compared to our neighbors to the south so per capita investment in in infrastructure is huge over the next decade. And yet, Minister Sherrill, I'm gonna ask you to, to switch gears to answer this question. Uh, we have heard from the private financiers of these kinds of investments globally that our numbers are too small. Uh, and, and in fact, they would like you to sort of bring municipalities together, bundle projects together in order to make them interesting yeah. enough. Well, there are two, two issues here. Number one is, first of all, uh, with respect to municipalities, uh, it's very important that municipalities have asset management plans, 10-year mm -hmm. year plans, uh, where they have, at that level, prioritized their infrastructure projects so that when a, a, a program is rolled out federally and or provincially, uh, they, can, they can apply for it. They know what they have to do. Traditionally, municipalities have been very weak on asset management plans. Over the last six or eight years, in Ontario <coughs> in particular, some of the other provinces, we are requiring municipalities to have asset management plans. So they will prioritize, they know what they need, and uh, uh, we can then harmonize, uh, harmonize very quickly. But on the other point, uh, and the extent of our investment, uh, it was very interesting when, uh, when Prime Minister Trudeau announced the, um, uh, the infrastructure bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, that he said quite specifically, and the release said quite specifically, it's to try to attract private sector and or other pools of capital into the infrastructure business. Right. That's a tacit, if not express, um, admission that there is not enough revenue in governments to meet the infrastructure demand. And consequently, uh, we have had some successes with triple P's. For example, in Ontario with our AFP model of triple P's, right. uh, we've been, been able to dramatically expand uh, how much money we can invest in infrastructure. So uh, collectively, uh, we have to look at ways and means to attract those big pools of capital uh, into uh, infrastructure, infrastructure projects. Other jurisdictions around the world have done much better than Canada with respect to that. The infrastructure bank is, is one of the tools that we can use uh, to put together that type of investment in infrastructure, looking at uh, rates of return for investors, including uh, pension funds. We've got a few minutes left here. Um, can I open it up to the audience for questions? Um, if there are any, we've got the catch box. Put your hand up and they will throw it at you, apparently. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, and, and thank you uh, for uh, presenting to us this, this morning. It's Bryce Conacher from uh, Climate Solutions Group, and I've heard um, both with Mr. Minister Baines at the breakfast and uh, with you gentlemen this, this morning a lot about greenhouse gas reductions, both in Ontario and across Canada, with the launch of the cap and trade system here in Ontario and the uh, announcement of the pan-federal system. Is there thinking around the integration and opportunity of greenhouse gas reductions as it relates to greenhouse gas projects and the offset and the potential offset market from those projects? Uh, one thing that we are proposing to do uh, is under our green infrastructure plan, uh, when we negotiate bilateral agreements with the provinces and territories, is uh, have this dedicated funding of uh, close to $9 billion that we will work with provinces to support them in the uh, in, in, in green, uh, uh, in, uh, how do they support a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions or even investments into, uh, into water, wastewater infrastructure or making the existing infrastructure more optimizing the existing infrastructure uh, as well. So I think that's where we see opportunities for us to work together with yeah. province. Yeah. Uh, as you're probably aware, Ontario has a very, um, uh, very significant climate change action plan, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is a plan to reduce emissions uh, designated amounts over a period of time. And uh, we're in the process of harmonizing our infrastructure policies and programs to meet the climate change action plan. Those two 
items have to merge, uh, and they are merging fairly quickly. Um, I mean, the federal government, uh, you had your, uh, your program for uh, post-secondary education, yep. which was retrofit uh, dollars, which is a climate change action plan, actually. And uh, we provided some matching fundings in order to do that collaboratively. Uh, and I think we're on the same page uh, in terms of uh, 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 looking at renewing infrastructure, not only building new. And so we, we're trying to harmonize our programs on that. Uh, I think most people are aware of the fact that uh, significant emissions come from buildings and from transportation. Uh, if you look at Ontario, for example, uh, our level of investment in transit and uh, particularly uh, is very, very significant. And that includes electrifying the system, which is reducing emissions. So we have to connect the dots here in terms of uh, our infrastructure policy and our climate uh, action plan. Uh, I think we're doing quite an adequate job, if not an excellent job of it, but uh, it's new territory for governments. And uh, I think we've got a good start here in Ontario. I, I think the, uh, the triple P opportunity there is then to connect the other dot, which is carbon finance. And, that, and that's a connection for, uh, for private capital yes. to come in. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question, if there's one in the, in the room. Well, I have one. Yes, oh, sure. darn it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> First off, I don't know, I, I should pick up one of these just for the home game. Uh, <laughs> First off, congratulations to the, both federal and provincial governments for uh, undertaking to ramp up investment in infrastructure. The budget is a signal achievement uh, federally, uh, and I know will affect us all. I'm Jason Switzer. Uh, I'll speak wearing, uh, wearing my hat as, uh, as a senior advisor at the Pemin Institute. There's two ways of looking at infrastructure investment. One is uh, that if you, if you consider carbon finance, uh, you might have an increment that's focused on greening infrastructure. Another way to look at it is that every decision, every infrastructure investment we make right now has to be uh, climate sensitive if we're going to successfully meet our 30% our, um, our reduction goal as well as longer term decarbonization. So I guess the question is, uh, how are we structuring uh, infrastructure decision making both federally and provincially, to ensure that every decision is a low carbon decision? Is there going to be a prioritization of those investments that are most significant from a decarbonization perspective, for example? Or, or will it just be an increment, an add-on um, sort of investment around uh, lower carbon infrastructure? Thanks. Well, those of you who pay attention to what goes on in the parliament, uh, would know that there, there's a motion passed by the parliament uh, that talks about exactly the same thing that you're talking about, uh, assessing the impact of infrastructure on the environment during construction and after construction, how those investments are actually helping us achieve those goals. One thing that my department is developing is, uh, is how do we apply green lens to infrastructure investments? Uh, so if you have any ideas, uh, we would definitely like to uh, like to learn, and we definitely want to engage provinces uh, on, on that, because this is a shared goal. This is, this is a collective desire uh, of governments, through governments of Canadians, uh, to be building more resilient uh, and sustainable communities. Uh, the province of Ontario has already initiated, for example, in our own, uh, we're the second largest landowner in, in the country after the federal government, and uh, there, there are a large portfolio there. Uh, so when we are significantly retrofitting or building new, uh, it has to be to a lead gold or silver standard. So that's number one. Uh, secondly, uh, we will be introducing in our procurement process as well uh, climate change action plan issues uh, in order to, uh, to integrate it. And I think, uh, uh, I think you'll see most governments, provinces and the federal government now are, are moving in that direction. Uh, in a very significant way. So I think we can have some level of confidence that uh, uh, we're going to be there very soon. We are at time, so I'm going to ask you to join me in thanking the ministers for their time. Thanks, you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.